I went on a mission to find the best table saw for beginners and those on a budget or in small shops. And I picked this one because I believe this is it. I bought this myself, paid for it, come straight off of Amazon as you see here. First thing I'm gonna do is go over all these features, tell you why I picked this saw, then we'll start cutting stuff. We're gonna cut some walnut, pine, plywood, put it through its paces, make sure this thing remains accurate as well as has enough power for the type of cuts you'll be using it for. If you're interested in checking this saw out for yourself, I'll put a link in the description below. The main reason I chose this saw is because of the rack and pinion fence, but we'll get to that in just a minute. The second reason, well, the third, the second was the blade size, which is 10 inches. The third reason is because it's small and compact, and a lot of us are working in small shops, like a garage or even your driveway or a carport. This is perfect for that because it comes with its own integrated stand. You could actually use this on a bench top, or you could bring it out in the driveway or to the works site, lock these down, Now you have a table saw that has a stand that you can actually use. Not only that is it's fairly stable for these type of legs. I mean, if you're pushing boards through that, it's not gonna tip over or anything like that on you. Also this leg on the front left, in other words, this is where you operate the saw up here, right here has a little feature. You undo this clip and then this allows you to extend this leg down or up just by twisting it. And then you can lock it into place when ready. What does that do? That is for unlevel or uneven ground, like garage floors that aren't level or a work site. It's really cool. It allows you to get this thing stable. From the factory, it was a perfect 90 degree angle from the blade to the table, as well as the blade was square to the miter slots from front to back. So that's one of the main things you wanna look for in a table saw is that this fence stays accurate and parallel to the blade at all times. And that's one of the things I, reasons I picked this saw specifically was because of the rack and pinion fence. This high-low fence actually has two positions. The first one right here, see there's a notch. See that first notch right there it snaps into? Then it also has a lower position right there. What is that for? That lower position is a work support. When you're cutting wider stock, like plywood or any wide panel type or sheet type goods, that holds it at the exact same level as your table. That gives you nice support out here on the end because a lot of times, if you don't have this on this open style table saws, if that isn't there, especially thinner sheet goods like quarter inch plywood, it seems to go under here and just throws your cuts off. It just, it makes it annoying. So having that work support is really cool. You'll also see this uh, cut indicator. This is gonna tell you how far away from the blade you are. This is also adjustable so you can dial it in just right. You'll see two different gauges, 17 and 13, 14 and 18, they're on top of each other. One is for when you put the fence on the first post. The other one is for when you put the fence on the outer post to make the widest cuts possible. It does come with a push stick and it's integrated into the saw, so you'll always have it handy right when you need it. On the back of the saw, you get a dust port, that elbow that comes off and inside there. And you'll notice there's a wing nut there and a blade change tool right here on the saw. One thing to note that it is highly adjustable. So if anything ever gets knocked off in transport, you drop it, you knock it over, whatever, and, it, and something gets out of square, you can adjust everything. The blade uh, 90 can be adjusted as well as the blade to the miter gauge this way can be adjusted. There's some fine adjustments underneath and details on the back of the saw how to adjust that, but it's really simple to do. This saw comes with a blade guard and anti-kickback paws, P-A-W-L-S. So these will help prevent kickback. This protects you from the blade and I recommend you use these. But for this video, so that you can see everything, I'm going to take at least these off. It's probably one of the most feature packed table saws in this price point that I could find and the reason I chose it. But now we gotta really see if it's worth its salt because we're fixing to start cutting some stuff from thick to thin, everything in between. Let's try it. Just the fence, you can unlock that lever, move it over. Let's do a, uh, what do you think? Two inch rip cut, first power on. Sounds pretty powerful. Let's try it. It's plywood, but it cut through that pretty smoothly. It did booger up the plywood pretty bad. So if I was, uh, if I was going to be cutting plywood, I would definitely change the blade. 
two by six. Cutting through a two by six was easy. Like it went right through that. Now this is a pretty decent blade so far. I've only cut plywood in the pine two by six, but so far it's good. It's good enough. Now we're gonna cut through this piece of eight quarter walnut. This ought to be a pretty good test for the saw to see how powerful it is. Stock blade on walnut, it did really well. I was actually very surprised. I may not even put the uh, Marples blade on this one. I don't think it would hold up over time. I think you were gonna wind up with, uh, uh, it would get dull on you fairly quickly because it's a stock blade. But for starting out, I think it'd be perfectly fine. Actually pretty impressed with that. This saw is like most every other table saw I've ever seen other than Harvey. These come with the worst uh, miter gauges you can imagine. They're plastic, they're cheap, almost not even worth keeping. And I would look at something like the Incra V27. This is a very affordable miter gauge. It's extremely accurate and it'll fit most any saw, including this one. It slips right into that miter slot and then it has adjustable discs that you tighten this down and that makes sure there's no slop or play in the miter gauge or in the miter gauge in the slot itself. This will get you really accurate square cuts. Perfectly square. Walnut, perfectly square, 90 degrees. So that's exactly what we wanted out of that blade. This, there is a removable throat plate here. Then you have two wrenches to be able to change the blade. One open end, one boxed end. The open end goes on the left side of the blade. One thing I think that is kind of unique about a saw in this category is you can actually use a dado stack. And if you don't know, a dado stack allows you to cut wider grooves. <clears throat> for half laps or dados, uh, cutting, uh, so shelving, things like that. And this is a really good dado stack. It's a Freud, it's very affordable at about a hundred bucks or so, but you can add this to your saw up to five eighths inches wide. I've installed the dado stack as you just saw, and we're gonna cut a few dados with it and see how it performs. Now, dado stack is really thick, wide blades, and they can put a little strain on underpowered saws, but that's one of the unique features I like about this saw because a lot of saws in this price range, you can't use the dado stack. And if you've ever cut half laps or grooves for drawer bottoms, things like that, you know how long it can take to continually just move your spence over tiny bits at a time until you can actually get a wide enough groove. This will help you speed your process up. I'm actually more than a little surprised at the dado uh, cuts because the first one was relatively shallow. It's about a quarter inch wide. The second one was pretty deep as you can see here, but it, it bogged a little bit in the middle of the cut, but not enough that I would even be concerned about it. Typical under load, uh, it performed extremely well. So good job on the dado cut. All right, so I've installed a CMT full kerf 60 tooth combination blade and I'm gonna cut some lip leopard wood, leopard wood. I'm gonna cut some leopard wood. This is very dense, very hard wood. So this should max out the test on how powerful the motor is on this saw. Kind of impressed that uh, Rick went through that um, leopard wood with ease and just nice, smooth cut, no burning, just awesome. This thing is awesome for $350. This is a good deal in my opinion. Now there's some things I don't like about it, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But a few things that have really surprised me about the saw, number one is the power. This thing was cutting through everything, including that leopard wood without any issues, really deep dado. I mean, it's a good saw. It's got a good powerful motor. Another thing is it's cutting extremely accurate. I made multiple cuts. I've been here all afternoon cutting. And you can see here, these little shavings I was cutting off of the walnut strip here, 
they're paper, paper thin. So the, the fence was holding its on and holding everything square, which is exactly what you want in a table saw. It doesn't matter what the price is, whether it's 350 or 3,500, it needs to have a square fence or the table saw is no good. I really like the integrated stand and it's really solid. I, you saw me cutting all sorts of things that never wiggled and wobbled and made me feel unsteady or unsafe around the saw, which I really appreciate. I love this fence. It's an excellent fence for a saw of this price range. It locks in and out with the handle on the side and you can either micro adjust it with this dial because it's geared or if you just need to move it big time, you can just grab a hold of it and move it. And then of course there's two tabs, one on the front, one on the back and you can totally remove it if you want. Dust collection with a shop vac is fairly good. I was quite actually impressed with that as well, as long as the hose was in there. If you have a way to connect that and keep it in there all the time, I think you'll be pretty well pleased with the dust collection on this thing. Now, what I don't like, I extremely vehemently do not like how the blade change is. I wish there was a blade lock button and then you only use one wrench. That would be ideal. But if you're using two, at least give me area or room to access the second wrench on the far side of the blade. This is not. And the wrench seemed to be either, I think it was way or a tiny bit um, too small. So it wouldn't actually fit on there without having to wiggle it and finally get it on there. Uh, that was frustrating. And I made multiple blade changes from the stock to the CMT, to the Dado, to the blue uh, Irwin Marple. So lots of blade changes and I was getting quite frustrated with that part of it. If that's the worst thing about the saw, I think you'll be all right. Another thing I don't love about the saw is it's extremely loud, like really loud. So make sure you have some type of hearing protection. Uh, I accidentally turned it on without having these on one time. I was like, immediately knew that I should have had these on. So I stopped it, put them on. You have a max of 25 and a half rip. I do wish that was longer up to about 30, at least 30, give us 30, come on. We need 30 inches, but 25 and a half is serviceable for most things, especially in a wood shop, small wood shop. You should be able to get away with that, especially if you're making cutting boards, things like that. At a 90 degree, this will cut through a full size four by four. In other words, three and a half by three and a half. It's actually about three and five eighths from the throat plate to the top of the blade. So you shouldn't have any worries there about uh, as far as cutting capacity. I like that the fence has a high low feature. In other words, it flips over and then you also have the work support when you're ripping wide panels. Personally, my opinion, I think this is one of the best bang for the buck table saws a beginner or someone on a budget could buy because it just has all those features in a nice package. Now, is it perfect? Of course not, but my $3,500 professional cabinet saw is not perfect either, but it has a lot of things going for it. Really the only annoyance I found was the blade change and you really don't do that a whole lot. I can't have two saws, so I'm giving this one away to one of our channel members or patron supporters. They support us directly. I wanna be able to give that back to them. If you would be interested in joining one of those, you can look in the description. There's a link that tells you what perks you get, how to join, all that. And if you're a channel member or patron and want to enter, then details will be available on the community tab or on Patreon. If you're not and you want to join before August 1st, 2022 will be the deadline for this one. If you have recommendations or suggestions for other products you'd like to see me review for beginner or budget friendly woodworking, let me know, comment below. If you like this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to where I recommend a router for beginners. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also, another one of my favorite videos, my favorite paint sprayer right there.